Come on, Henry, tell me what you know about Simon. What, I, nothing, I know nothing. You were jumping to conclusions. I don't have it. All I meant to say, but uh, what are you doing? Yes, Las Vegas, Nevada. Can I have the number for the State Gambling Commission? Okay, okay. I'm sure they'd be very interested in hearing about your hot tip. Yeah, all right, listen, Katie, all right, okay, listen, I'll tell you everything you want to know. Just hang up the phone, okay? Thank you. I, uh, I, I have something that may answer all your questions. What is it? Something, uh, it's something Simon left for you, okay? What? I don't have it here, I don't have it here. It's in safekeeping, I have to go get it. Okay, then go! Okay, all right. Go, go right now! You don't have to hit me like that, I'll go. Please, Please just hurry. As as I can. And you better come back or the Nevada Gambling Commission's gonna get an earful. Simon didn't just leave me. Maybe he doesn't hate me. Katie, you okay? Fine. Henry just got back. Yeah, that made me sad too. Where is he? He's a. He just uh, went out for a bit. Good, because I need to say something in private. No, you don't. Actually, I think it would probably be better for you and me if you just left. Hey, Mr. DA. What? You know, I just came up with a great idea how to reassure the public that your scandal ridden office still maintains a great relationship with the Oakdale PD. Oh, yeah? It's a take a cop to lunch program. Really? You have anybody in mind? Oh, just this beautiful strawberry blonde who thinks that you are hot. Well, let me call my secretary and see what's on the schedule. <sighs> Morning, Tom Margo. Hey, we have to talk. Uh, sure. Just be a minute. What's up? Mike Kaznoff. You broke the law? No. Well, we did. Mike's decided he wants to find Simon Fraser. No, no, he can't do that. Yes, he can. If he doesn't get any cooperation from the OPD, he decided he was going to hire his own PI. Well, why, why? Why does he suddenly care about Simon? He doesn't, Margo. He cares about Katie. Well, can't he just buy her flowers, take her to dinner or something? No, he, I think he'd like to do that, but Katie's completely shut down. Unless you get some answers about Simon and why he took off, she's not going to be any good to anyone. Mike says she's really hurting, Margo. Yeah, well... Telling her the truth isn't going to cheer her up. Well, it might give her some peace of mind just to know. To know? To know that we think that Bartleby Shears was murdered and possibly her husband did it? That does not cheer a wife up. Listen, she... She'll understand why we did what we did. We were trying to protect Katie and Simon. It's not like we know where Simon is. No, I don't think that she's going to understand that, and neither is Tom. He just took over the DA's office. Great, now his wife has to hand him a new scandal. How are we going to tell him that we just ID'd a body that's been six feet under for two months? I don't know. Hang on! The cake! Where's my cake? Sorry, I didn't even bring a cookie. I'm Jeffrey Starr with the New England Journal of Medicine. I'm looking for Dr. Decker. Right place, wrong time. He's not here, sorry. Oh, I wanted to interview him for an article I'm doing in geriatric medicine. He's that good? Uh, yeah, he is. Remarkable. Will he be back soon? Well, I hope so. He's marrying my mother this afternoon. Really? Mm -hmm. And if all goes well, they'll be on a fabulous honeymoon, you know, for at least a week. So I hope you don't need your interview anytime soon. I should have scheduled it, but I thought I'd have a better chance for a quote if you didn't have to try to find time to see me. I know Dr. Decker's a busy man. Yeah, he is. You know what? Why don't you check out Memorial Hospital? I'm sure he's checking on some patients before the ceremony. Well, thanks. I owe you one, Ms. Oh, Munson. Emily Munson. Don't thank me. I'm sure Rick's going to love to hear from you. I, I got to run. I've got a wedding to plan. Sorry. Bye. I should find all this attention flattering. Instead of just plain annoying. Rick? Huh? Have you seen Chris? Yeah, he was here a while ago. I was pretty wiped out, though. I think he went home to get some sleep. Great. Now, aren't you supposed to be home helping your mother with the wedding? Well, I've already done a ton of stuff, and thanks to me, you guys have the honeymoon suite at the Lakeview tonight. Oh, that's wonderful, Alice. And everything I didn't get done, Emily's taking care of. Shouldn't she be heading home? 
Oh, so you want to get married in your lab coat? No, no. I'll be leaving in a minute. I'm just, just going to go check out. Okay. Well, thank you, Allison, for making everything possible. <sighs> Did Dr. Decker say where he was going? Um, to check on Dr. Hughes. Do you know where I can leave a note for Chris? How about in his pocket? Did you get the flowers? Have you seen your mother, Chris? I'm right here. Did something happen? Change in Bob's condition? Oh, I, I wouldn't know. Dr. Decker would be the man. Uh, he's with Bob right now. Oh, well, sorry. Right. I'm headed for Bob's room. Well, you, you might want to hurry if you want to congratulate him. He's leaving to get married in a few minutes. Married? I had no idea. Excuse me. Yes, I did get the flowers. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, did, did you like them? If you ever do something like that ever again, Chris Hughes, I will never forgive you. You want me to leave? Mike, you've been really great ever since Simon left. Well, that's what I came to talk to you about. No, you can't, because I've already no, put no, so look, much I on your lap. <laughs> Henry's back. Stop, and he listen, listen, to... listen. Jack and I are going to find Simon. Yeah, what's wrong? Um, first of all, I'm sorry. You're canceling our lunch date already? No, but I don't think you're going to want to even dine at the same table as me. No, this is all my fault. Say. I made a bad no, decision. No, 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 it was my call. Would Jack. you guys stop talking in code? Tell me what's going on. A murder. Okay. Remember Bartleby Shears? Suspected him of blackmailing Simon Fraser a couple months ago. Simon took off. We thought Bartleby took off, too. Found him dead at the old mill. And you think Simon's responsible? It's possible Bartleby Shears had threatened to kill Katie. Uh, okay, so you're telling me this why? Because Bartleby Shears is buried in Potter's Field under the name John Doe. Jack and I suppressed his identity. And you expect the district attorney's office to look the other way? Well, I thought you knew me, Marco. Okay, let me get this straight. You call me a skunk, I send you flowers, and if I ever do anything this low again, you'll never forgive me. I was right to call you a skunk. Okay, maybe not right, but... You were being so... Cold? Harsh? Distant? Yeah. That's why I sent you those flowers. Okay, I, I haven't been called a skunk in a really long time, and it got me thinking about you and me and what all that means. So did you come up with an answer? Yeah, that we're an unpredictable mess. And that I like it. You do? Yeah, but relationships take time, and I don't have that right now, you know, with my... Dad being so sick, I, I just got too much to think about. It would help if you would talk. It's not how I work. Well, that's how I work. You want to be with me, you got to talk to me. <laughs> Why? Because. And that's what mature people do. I'm not the only one here who needs to grow up. Well, I hadn't really looked at it that way. So how about it? Are you going to talk to me? I'll try. Okay. Am I forgiven? Yeah. <laughs> but I do need to ask one question. And... Warning! <laughs> warning, it... Is about your feelings. Oh. <clears throat> well, come on. You said that you would try. Yeah, but I meant, like down the line okay fine how do I feel about what me are we a couple Nelson I don't know okay but at least we survived our first fight so what do we do now kiss and make up
No one can stop me now. Not you. Not Kim. Not Chris. Not even that best Dr. Daniel. Oh, Rick. I'm so glad I caught you. Oh, Kim. I was just running a few stress tests on Bob. Are there any changes? I'm sorry. <sighs> Looked almost as if you were whispering in Bob's ear. <laughs> I was whispering thanks. Your husband's the reason that Susan and I are getting married today. Oh, yes. I, I, just, I just heard about that. Congratulations from both of us. I know Bob would wish you well. And I just wish that he could be at the wedding. Now, I'm going to be away from the hospital for a few days. Uh -huh. You call it anything change. Oh, of course, of course. But you just you go ahead. You have a happy wedding day and honeymoon. And I'm very grateful to you for everything. You know. Isn't it lucky that I ran into Dr. Daniels? I mean, he told me that, that you were getting married. I needed to hurry up and get over here if, if I was going to catch you. So I'm glad I did. I wish you all kinds of happiness. Oh. <laughs> Oh, yes. Dr. Daniels is very helpful. Are, are you mad? Just answer the question. Why did you ID Bartleby Shears as a John Doe? Because I didn't feel that Katie could handle the information that Simon might have murdered someone, even if it was self-defense. Okay, enough said. You're okay with this? Katie saved your life. I will always, always be indebted to Katie. Okay, great. Uh, but there's new pressure to find Simon, so in order for Jack and I to have any control over the case, we're going to have to reopen it. And how are you going to explain that we just now ID to John Doe? Well, anonymous tips. You know, they just come in every day. It looks like I'll be working through lunch. See you tonight. Jack, thanks, Tom. Whoa. I love that man. So we reopen the case. Yeah, you know, this means we're going to have to put an arrest warrant out for Simon. Yeah, and uh, Katie's not going to like that. No, she isn't. You and Jack are going to find my husband? Yeah. I met with Jack this morning, and, and he's actually meeting with Margot right now about opening an official investigation. Is this because of my meltdown last night? You need some answers, okay? And I'm gonna help you find them. Why? Why are you doing this for me? Because you're a good friend. You know, and good friends help each other out, right? Allison. What's the matter, Chris? Scared? <laughs> you make me feel a lot of things, but fear isn't one of them. Then kiss me. Not at work. What are you doing later? I'm going to my mother's wedding. <laughs> Just another sunny dysfunctional day in the Stewart family. You know, I was invited to that wedding. You were? Rick asked me to be his best man, but I said no. Maybe I should rethink my decision. You do? And I'll rethink what to wear. You're home. dress it's cost a fortune perfect sounds like it's perfect for a bride <sighs> me a bride <laughs> i can't yeah. believe this is happening i know the cake the cake is in the refrigerator oh. next to the champagne flowers are done silver's polished floor is vacuumed and allison booked you guys a room at the lakeview tonight a honeymoon suite what a wonderful gift you've given oh, me oh you're welcome oh and did i mention that there's a bubble bath upstairs waiting for you. So you go upstairs, relax. I'm going to finish up here, go home, change, and all that stuff. And all you have to do is relax. Enjoy yourself. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, baby. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And it's thank your wedding you. day. I want you to enjoy every minute of it. Oh, 
I never thought I'd fall in love again. Much less be a pampered bride. And for, for you and Allison to be so supportive. I know my relationship with Rick has been very unexpected. But you like him, don't you? Tell me you like him. Don't you get it, Mom? I love you. Come on, Allison. You and I have a wedding to attend. Rick, about your wedding. Excuse me, Chris. Dr. Daniels. I thought I lost you. When you ducked into Dr. Dixon's office? You should have joined us. Dr. Dixon agrees with me that your work is finished here. Your contract is terminated, and whether you like it or not, this investigation is officially closed. You didn't hire me? You can't fire me. Well, John Dixon can and will. If you don't believe me, go talk to him. I may not be the one to nail you, Dr. Decker. But sooner or later, someone will. I'm sorry, Chris, you were saying. Yeah, I, uh... Dr. Decker, there's an outside call for you. It's a man. He says it's urgent. Uh, let me wait a minute. Yes, Dr. Decker, how can I help? My name is Jeffrey Starr. Maybe you've heard of me. I've written for Dirty Linen, Prime Suspect. Well, why would you want to talk to me? Because I'm always looking for a story, and I think I found one. San Francisco Mercy Hospital had a series of mysterious deaths when you were there. And as the local authorities can tell you, I had nothing to do with it. The local authorities might just change their minds if they saw what I've uncovered. No, that case is closed. The case is never closed on murder, Dr. Decker. Not while the murderer is still at large. On the next as the world turns. Wait, Mike, think about this. Somebody out there has seen Simon and talked to him. I know my daughters have doubts about him, but one of these days, he's going to win their hearts over just the way he's won mine. What's this? I call it the life and murderous times of Dr. Rick Decker.